News Watch. Now, one of the great scandals about the jailing of the innocent Cardinal George Pell is the role of the Victoria Police. 26 times it has now charged Pell with child sex offences after advertising for accusers. Every single time the charge was so stupid or so weak or so badly investigated or all of the above that the charges had to be dropped or have now been dismissed. And guess what? They still will not give up trying to get to him. They are still preparing yet another case that you may read about tomorrow. Well, 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 I just think this has been typical modus operandi for the police. Leak at a time of convenience to them, which happens to be on the day that we are going to run the exclusive interview with George Pell. I smell a dirty big rat. We need an inquiry into the Victoria Police. But another scandal is the role of a second state institution, the taxpayer-funded ABC. Now, for years, the ABC ran a witch hunt against Pell, pushing one implausible in claim after another against him, not one of which stood up in court. For instance, this giant state broadcaster aggressively promoted those claims that Pell somehow managed to rape two teenage boys at once in his busy cathedral at his busiest time. And the seven High Court judges looked at the logistical impossibilities of this and they cleared Pell. Seven judges to nil. But not once had I ever heard one single ABC presenter or reporter express their doubts about this bizarre rape story. A rape story in which one of the alleged victims said he hadn't been raped at all. As I say, a witch hunt. And tomorrow, in my exclusive interview with the Cardinal, right here, 7pm, he will hit back. Here is just some of what he will have to say about the ABC. Does the ABC's role in your persecution concern you? Yes, it does, because, I mean, it's partly financed by Catholic taxes. I believe in free speech. I uh, acknowledge the right of those who differ from me to state their views. But uh, in a national broadcaster to have a, an overwhelming presentation of one view and only one view, I think that's a betrayal of the national interest. Watch here at 7pm for the rest tomorrow, including what Pell has to say about the Victoria Police and the role of corrupt Vatican officials. Suspected role. You will not want to miss it. But back to the ABC. The ABC does not like people like me calling it out for its prejudice and its anti-Pell malice and its abuse of power. Its editorial director, Craig McMurtry, has now formally responded in an article complaining some of the language thrown around about prejudice and a witch hunt against George Pell seems to ignore the first principles of journalism and the facts. Oh, really? Getting a lecture to the ABC about the first principles of journalism. Joining me is Jared Henderson, columnist with the Australian newspaper, head of the Sydney Institute and author of the Media Watchdog blog. Jared, this uh, defence of the ABC is so bad that to me it actually confirms the ABC is as guilty as sin. Now, first of all, I want to take you through this. The overall claim, the ABC is not conducting a witch hunt, wasn't biased, true or false? Well, it clearly was conducting a witch hunt. As Greg Barnes, the uh, civil li libertarian lawyer, said recently, Louise Milligan, the key ABC journalist here, wasn't acting as a journalist. She was acting as a player. She was a Pell antagonist. If you only have to look at her Twitter feed to know she's a Pell antagonist, she's a player. But she was the principal ABC journalist to go after George Pell. There were others, most recently Sarah, Sarah Ferguson. Uh, the, whole, the whole reporting over m many years really only featured Pell antagonists. So after a, after a court decision, the ABC would drag in the, the Guardian's David Marr, another Pell antagonist, to comment on the case. Occasionally, Louise Milligan comment on the cases. Now, I've raised this with the ABC. They all said, like Craig McMurtry said, no problem here. 
But what would you expect Craig McMurtry to say? I, the real issue is where's the editor-in-chief? David Anderson, he gets paid to be editor-in-chief. What's he said? Nothing. So uh, as I understand it, Craig McMurtry said about, about, about number three down the pile and he said, it's all okay, folks. And then Fran Kelly and Lee Sowles and Paul Bongiorno and others involved in the pile on all pile in, all pile on, pile in and agree with their editorial director. And, uh, in, in any other institution, this would be laughed out of court. But the ABC is praising the ABC, and that's supposed to be—that's supposed to resolve the case. They're essentially Let's, all players. Look, They're all. They are. And they people. are. They, and like I say, it was—it was all on one side. There was not one no. journalist over the journey that said, "Wait a minute, this this doesn't this doesn't make sense." Let me go through some of McMurtry's claims because I really want to nail the ABC's crimes against journalism here. Now, McMurtry actually praises. That uh, chief anti pell attacker you mentioned, Louise Milligan, who even wrote a book, a whole book peddling unsubstantiated smears of Pell. Now, McMurtry even boasts that it was the ABC's Milligan who met the former choir boy at the centre of the now quashed case against Cardinal Pell. And it was Milligan who found and interviewed the family of the second alleged victim. Now, Jared, what McMurtry doesn't say in his whole article is that the second so-called victim, now dead, had told his parents he had never been abused. Now, that should have already been a huge red flag to the ABC to be more sceptical of these claims. Now, why didn't McMurtry mention this? Well, because he's defending one of his staffers, who, to whom uh, the ABC has given enormous attention, spent a lot of money on, he's just defending someone in the clan, someone in the collective, that's what he's doing. It's, it's no great surprise. But what it overlooks is some essential facts, is that the ABC gave Lu Louise Milligan a whole program, the whole 30 minutes of 7.30 initially, to raise claims about Pell and the Ballarat swimming pool. They were thrown out by the, the, the Victorian Director of Public Prosecutions, who's not friendly to Pell. They were thrown out. Then they gave Louise Milligan a whole program on Four Corners to look at the St Patrick's Cathedral case. And that was thrown out by uh, a unanimous decision of the High Court. Now, if any other journalist had, had been involved in two entire programs making very serious allegations, none of which had resulted in convictions, someone would say, well, how did you get to that? What, what level of journalist, journalism was it that made you unable to see what eventually everyone else saw, including uh, the DPP uh, in some cases and the High Court? in one case. So, but all, all Mr. Big Mertry is doing is defending his own and it's a pretty weak defence. The real issue is how did the ABC get it so wrong for so long and why didn't correct. it ask other people what they thought about the case? Well, that's ex exactly correct. I mean, uh, they didn't do the most basic checks to see into these allegations, see if they were actually <laughs> physically impossible. I mean, neither Pell nor his village victims, as I found out simply by walking through the cathedral as the accuser claimed he did, neither Pell nor his alleged victims could have got to the alleged scene of the crime, a change room in the few minutes that it wasn't being used straight after mass. Now, McMurtry's defence uh, is that the ABC is in the police force uh, or a court. Its job is to pursue evidence-based uh, reporting and the truth. It didn't do any of that, Jared. It didn't do any of that. In fact, yeah. it did act like a court, convicted Pell without doing the evidence-based reporting. Now, didn't the ABC also, and this is the other thing that really gets me, just days before the verdict of the High Court, and the ABC knew or suspected something, uh, it was Pell was going to be acquitted, it ran fake claims that it had found two new accusers who said that George Pell abused them, claims that were in fact not new and which prosecutors had dropped. Why didn't McMurtry mention that? Because to me, it's clear evidence of an agenda. Well, you can't defend the ABC in general and Sarah Ferguson, the reporter in particular, in a program on which uh, Louise Milligan advised, she's in the credits. Um, you, you can't defend that, so you simply ignore the issue. But what were presented as, as new allegations were not only not new allegations, but they had been regarded by the Director of Public Prosecutions as not sufficient to ever bring about a conviction. So the DPP dropped it, but you virtually never found that in the program, nor as I recall was there any specific reference uh, to the fact that the case was currently before the High Court with respect to other matters. So look, it's just uh, McMurtry defending his own in an ABC publication, as the French would say, quell surprise, nothing surprising there.
the ABC needs to get an, an, an external investigator, not a hand-picked friend, to investigate this because yet you cannot have a state based, state-funded institution like the ABC what, lodging a crusade against an innocent man that results in him spending 405 days in jail for a crime he did not commit. This is just, this can't be swept under the rug like this. Now, Jared, other people who led this witch hunt against Pell, not happy with you for saying <laughs> last week that yeah. they did lead the witch hunt against Pell. Now, one of, of course, is uh, Lucy Morris Ma, who also wrote a book that smeared Pell yeah. and uh, who broke the story that police were investigating this case that has now been thrown out neck and crop by the High Court. She was given huge publicity by the ABC presenters like John Fain, big surprise, and sounded quite excited on commercial TV as well about Pell being investigated. Here she is. I came across actually that he was under investigation through Sarno Task Force, that there was 20 full-time detectives who had been investigating him for 12 months. Now back then, uh, Morris Ma said that, uh, and I'm quoting here, I'd call Pell the victim of, uh, that, sorry, she complained that I had called Pell the victim of a witch hunt and she said when it comes to child sexual abuse, she was happy to be the witch leading any hunt. But now tune has changed, Jared. Now she says she's filed a complaint against you to the Australian Press Council saying the bullying by the powerful media commentators yeah. towards those of us who dared to investigate Pell is getting sinister and ugly. And Jared, you published a list in the Australian yeah. saying that she was part of a pylon. Your response to this this terrible sin of naming names? <laughs> well, I couldn't sleep last night when I heard I was being taken to the Australian <laughs> Press Council. What I find is amusing that an activist journalist like um, Morris Ma, who, who is an activist journalist and a protagonist, can't take any criticism. And the minute she's criticised, she's off to the Australian Press Council. So as a columnist and a commentator, I'm not allowed to criticise her but as a journalist activist, she's allowed to criticise George Pell, you, me, anyone she wants to. So if you, my view is if you're in the journalism business and you can't take any criticism, you're in the wrong business. I get criticised all the time. You get criticised all the time. I get as vile things are said about me, but I don't rush off to the Australia, Australia Press Council. I think they've probably got better things to do. And I'd be surprised if they haven't got better things to do. But... But we will see, and if it goes there, I look forward to it. Oh, look, look forward yeah. to it. I mean, honestly, after all she's done to uh, Cardinal Pelv, innocent, uh, and then to complain about simply being named for her role in this is, seems to me, <laughs> what can you say? What oh, can yeah. you say? Jared Henderson, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you. And to trending now. And I guess I should prove here that I'm not a Catholic apologist. I'm not even a Christian, the Pope. Now, frankly, when it comes to global warming, the man's...